A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. But what do we do after we reach that thousandth mile? We answer this question today as we explore the fantastic and one-of-a-kind journey of Voyagers 1 and 2. In the Greek epic, The Odyssey, the lead character Odysseus took 10 gruesome years to finally make it home to Ithaca. And to make that more severe, he even had to endure a few more challenges once he and his crew got home. But we guarantee you that story will be trumped by the stars of our show today, the Voyager Mission Probes. Ever since their launch in 1977, the two spacecraft have accomplished an amazing job of taking pictures of several points of interest in the solar system, especially of the gas giants. And now with all the strength and capability that these two bad boys have left, they continue their journey where no spacecraft have ever gone before, towards interstellar space. And just like all senior employees in a company, we honor these two outstanding testaments to human ingenuity by highlighting the greatest moments of their career. To adapt to the current trend in YouTube, why don't we do it in a countdown fashion too? I don't know about you, but that sounds like an amazing idea. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, the top five biggest accomplishments of the Voyager mission. Number five, the farthest selfie of all humanity. In the current age, everybody is getting crazy about taking selfies. Everyone tries to get creative by doing different kinds of poses, adding a lot of color and edits to the picture, adding filters just to make ourselves look at the very least presentable, and get approval from our social media friends through likes and hearts. No matter how beautiful our selfies get, I'm willing to bet that we could beat that with the picture that includes you, us, and the rest of humanity. We know what you're thinking. I've never even met you. How can we have already had a selfie? How about I let you find out yourself with a little mental jog? Say I have a lot of friends with me, like around 10. If we want to take a selfie with all of us, we have to take the camera phone farther so that the lens could capture all of us, right? Well, using that logic, we can capture all of humanity in one picture if we move our camera far enough. And that's what exactly we have accomplished with Voyager 1 on Valentine's Day in 1990, as the probe accomplishes its mission on Saturn, which of course we will talk about more in gruesome detail later, don't worry. NASA sent a command to flip over the camera towards the side where the Earth is and take the glorious photograph. Now I know you may think, aren't you cheating? Yeah, technically everyone is in that photograph, but it's just a dot. Why is it so meaningful? If you haven't heard yet, Carl Sagan already answered that question in an astonishingly eloquent statement. One excerpt from that statement goes, Look again at that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love. Everyone you know. Everyone you ever heard of. Every human being who ever was lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering. Thousands of confident religions ideologies and economic doctrines. Every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, Every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. I know you think that it's not even an HD picture of Earth. It's not even the first photo of the blue planet from space. Heck, you can't even make out where Earth is in the pale blue dot photo. But more than its features, what makes it extremely special and worthy of counting as an accomplishment for our retiring Voyager 1 is the message it carries. We are nothing but a speck in this vast universe. Let the gravity of how profound that knowledge is slowly sink in. Ain't all of that grand? Number 4. Carrying Mankind's Hello to the Universe Being millennials, I think a fact we can all agree with is how difficult introductions are, right? I mean, how do you even pick the proper words to say? How can people just make it seem so simple? But okay, we're completely okay with all of that introduction thing. What do we say first, usually? 
Well, the usual approach is to say something about ourselves. What movies we like watching, what music we listen to, our favorite food, favorite book, you know, the usual. With the expectation that the Voyager spacecraft will go beyond what it's expected to accomplish, the scientists at NASA's JPL attached two disks that would serve as mankind's sort of curriculum vitae to any extraterrestrial friend we may meet along the way. Aptly named the Golden Record, this material contains a massive sampler of human experience, such as over a hundred samples of sounds of nature. Hello from children all over the world spoken in 55 different languages, both active and ancient. A message from then US President Jimmy Carter. Several images from different scenarios on Earth, to name a few. Moreover, inscribed on the cover of the two 12-inch discs are instructions on how to play the records and a description of where our lovely planet is in a pulsar map. Let's pray that someday a civilization intelligent enough finds these records and finally drop by to say, hey, we got your message from the Voyager probes. Neat stuff. Enjoying the show so far? Let us know by pressing either a like or dislike. It helps us gauge your interest and deliver you better content. On to the next item. Number 3. Engineering and Computational Firsts The original mission of the Voyager expeditions was to take advantage of the alignment of the Jovian planets to be able to make a first-time observation of them. This is not a very simple task, so with these in mind, our engineers can't just simply send these probes away unprepared. NASA packed them up with a lot of upgrades that were never before used in previous missions. Now, astronomers back then expected the two probes to be in space for a considerably huge amount of time. They were about to be exposed to the harsh environment of space, so they did their best to set up layers of protection. For instance, both of the Voyagers were the first to have an extensive protection against radiation. This design was so sophisticated that it became the benchmark for setting up all the future radiation protection mechanisms. It is also the first to be protected against external electrostatic discharge. Astronomers have to do this since outer space is practically a gigantic ocean of danger for the instruments aboard any spacecraft, and the Voyagers pioneering this feature certainly led to numerous improvements in building space probes. Engineers have also prepared the Voyagers for a lot of data transmission activity. They were the first to employ the Reed-Solomon algorithm to reduce errors when sending back data to Earth. Subsequently, the ground control team have also set up communication antennas in array-like fashion to anticipate the large amounts of data the probes will be transmitting. Another first. And if you're not amazed enough, I think the highlight of the astronomers' engineering prowess on the Voyager missions was making it the first to have the ability to detect whatever problems it experiences and fix it on its own. This is important since, as we have been saying in this video multiple times already, it was expected that the two probes will be away for a very long time, so it just makes sense to have it fix itself whenever it's necessary. Number 2. Exploration Records in the Solar System I think this list wouldn't be complete or even make its point without us discussing the exploration accomplishments of the Voyager mission within the solar system. I mean, this is exactly what they were sent out to do after all. Who would have known that from a bold mathematical theory that we could possibly take advantage of the alignment of the gas giants? We are now recalling the greatest accomplishments of these two amazing venturers. Let's start off the list with the feats both the two probes have successfully done. Both of the Voyagers have discovered multiple moons from the outer planets, precisely three new moons in Jupiter, four in Saturn, eleven in Uranus, and then six in Neptune. Besides adding to the catalog of new moons, the two space probes also give a better insight about the weather patterns in Jupiter, including the popular Great Red Spot. Before the Voyagers came, the title of being a ringed planet in the solar system family was held exclusively by Saturn. However, because of the observation done by the two heroes, we now understand that this is not entirely the case. The probe sent back information about a thin ring system in Jupiter, and a couple more around Uranus and Neptune. Whoever liked the solar system must have loved these three planets so much that he or she put a ring on them. 
They've also discovered that one of Saturn's moons, Titan, has a much denser atmosphere than Earth and that individually the two Voyagers have accomplished a lot of exploration records too. For instance, Voyager 1 found active volcanoes on Jupiter's moon Io. This is huge news since this implies that the natural satellite experiences the same tug due to gravity as what the Earth's seas experience due to the gravity caused by the moon. Voyager 2, on the other hand, studied in detail the strange magnetic field around Uranus. And if you're a huge fan of planetary trivia, you already know that the planet had its magnetic field aligned along its equator, which is strange because most of the planets in the solar system have theirs along the poles. Moreover, this probe successfully flew by all of the four gas giants, becoming the first spacecraft to be able to do so. This graceful achievement is one of a kind. Since a decade before the Voyager, the space missions were focused on the moon. But the Voyagers went beyond that trope and set out new records. It was even said that the amount of information the two space probes sent to us was enough to repeatedly fill Encyclopedia Britannica 6,000 times. Imagine having that much material in your very own library. Man, what an amazing journey it has been. But I think all of these are nothing compared to the number one highlight of the Voyager's careers. Number one, going beyond the solar system. Now we have come to the most important accomplishment of the Voyager's missions, being the first man-made objects to enter interstellar space. Voyager 1, after successfully accomplishing its visit on the two giants, Jupiter and Saturn, was slingshot to infinity and beyond. And in September 2013, the probe finally crossed the heliopause, the boundary where the effects of the solar wind and interstellar wind are in equilibrium. As of writing, the spacecraft is currently at 148 astronomical units away from Earth and is continuously moving away. On the other hand, Voyager 2 took a bit of a detour before following its older brother. Actually, it wasn't supposed to and could have followed Voyager 1 immediately. However, scientists at the JPL saw that 2's trajectory can still be utilized to make it fly by Uranus and Neptune as well. The Congress around that time was convinced easily seeing the wealth of data that we received just from the Jupiter and Saturn missions. So the astronauts geared up Voyager 2 for two more flybys before finally letting it fly on its own towards the stars. And in November 2018, the probe joined its brother on the journey to the great beyond. As I speak right now, the two Voyagers are still recording and transmitting data on whatever they could on wherever they are. I know this will be a sad thing to talk about, but I guess you and I both know that the two missions won't be able to keep doing its task forever. Both the space probes use hydrazine for fuel, but they don't use a lot since they only need to use it for corrective action, like setting the trajectory for gravitational assist from another planet, for reorienting the probe for transmitting data, stuff like that. But since the probes are now going in interstellar space, a lot of reorienting has to be done to be able to make useful observations. The more we observe, the more we burn gas. The plutonium batteries that are used to power the instruments on board are bound to lose their power too soon. In fact, as of early this year, Voyager 1 only has four remaining instruments, while Voyager 2 has five. Seems like at some point we won't hear from these boys anymore. But regardless of that, what the Voyager accomplished through its lifetime is already breathtaking. We can even dare to say that without the help of these probes, we might be several years behind understanding our very own solar system. And without the features that these spacecraft have tried first, we may never have a benchmark to improve our current space probes on. I don't know about you, but I think that is truly a wonderful, accomplished life. I'd like to hear from you guys. What do you think is the greatest accomplishment of either of the two Voyager missions? Do you think they are as important as we hold them up to be? Let us know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you tell us what you think about the show by hitting that like or dislike button. Whatever you pick helps us make better videos in the future. And if you like what we show you, why don't you click on that subscribe button if you haven't yet. We make content every day. While you're at it, click the bell button as well so that you get notified whenever something new comes up. See you next time guys. Stay insanely curious.